my doctor wants to give me progesterone, it's low, and I'm in an early part of my pregnancy, but one of my friends was given progesterone to help bring her period. Will the progesterone cause a miscarriage? Thanks for clicking on Simply Tanika. I am Tanika. If you are new here, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. Let's hang out a while. If you are returning, welcome back. What's up, fertility fam? We gotta do what? Let's get those babies, ladies. Hello there. How are you? So you clicked on the video. You have some questions about progesterone. I've got some answers. <laughs> so I got a question. One of you guys, it, there's actually a couple of you guys. So let me see if I can just condense it down into one question. Help. My doctor wants to give me progesterone. It's low and I'm in an early part of my pregnancy, but one of my friends was given progesterone to help bring her period. Will the progesterone cause a miscarriage? It's a great question. In order to answer it, we have to go over how does progesterone work? First of all, what is it? It's a hormone. And I'm sure you know when you're pregnant, it's called the gestational period, right? Like you're the baby's in for 10 months, 40 weeks. That's your gestational period. So progesterone is pro-pregnancy. Pro, yes, pregnancy. So it supports the pregnancy. The thing is, it doesn't, your body doesn't know when you're pregnant, but every month that you have a period, it's preparing, or it has prepared technically, for you to be pregnant. And what happens is after you ovulate, and we know we track ovulations with those lovely little OPKs that we pee on. So first you have an estrogen surge. So if you're using the expensive ovulation test, that's when you get the flashy smiley face, right? Then you get your luteinizing hormone surge which on the expensive test, then you just get a solid smiley face. And if you're using the regular ones, you get those two dark lines where the test line is as dark or darker than the control line. That's your luteinizing hormone. Then what happens? So 12 to 48 hours after your surge is typically when you'll ovulate. What is ovulation? The egg that is inside of a follicle bursts through the follicle, and is released and welcoming sperm. If that egg is hit by sperm or not hit by sperm, your uterus won't know for probably seven days because that egg's got to make its way long journey down the fallopian tube and into the uterus. What happens though in those seven days is where that egg was in the follicle, that is now a corpus luteum. Corpus, because it's no longer with us. Um, but it's where the egg was. That corpus luteum, and also coincidentally, that's when you're in your luteal phase, corpus luteum, luteal phase, which is also your two week wait. That corpus luteum starts pumping out a hormone. That hormone is progesterone. It's sending out progesterone into your body. It's going to transform your endometrial lining or your uterine lining and make it nice and sticky, right? It grew in the first part of your cycle in the follicular phase when you had a lot of estrogen, it thickened up. And then when the progesterone comes, it's making it sticky. And it's got really seven days to tra transform that lining because in about seven days that hopefully fertilized egg, now embryo, is going to be looking for a home. Your body does not know if there's a fertilized egg coming or not it has to plan just in case, right? It's like your insurance plan. You don't know if you were gonna get in an accident, but just in case you have the insurance, or you don't know if anything's gonna happen in your house, a fire, but just in case you have a fire extinguisher. So just in case that egg is fertilized and is turned into an embryo and is looking for a snuggly place, your body every time is sending out progesterone. Sometimes it doesn't send out enough progesterone. So typically if you're going through fertility treatments or that you're having fertility issues or you've had miscarriages, what they'll do is they call it a, um, what do they call it? Cycle day 21 progesterone testing. 
they say cycle day 21 because in an average cycle, you ovulate about day 14 and then seven days later, remember those seven days, seven days later is 21, 14 plus seven is 21. So they'll test it then because that's when it should be at the highest, right? That's when all that progesterone has come out of that corpus luteum and has prepared that lining. It should be at the highest. If they test it and it's low and anything below 10 at that point is considered low, your doctor may or may not offer supplementation if you are actively trying to conceive. I Someone just DM'd me on Instagram and said their doctor won't give them progesterone or won't even test because they don't believe in it. It's not like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. It's not a thing to believe or disbelieve. Your insurance covers it and your progesterone is low. I highly recommend that you advocate for yourself and get your doctor to get you supplements. You can do vaginal suppositories. You can do oral suppositories. Um, you can do... Um, what is it? Oral, vaginal injections, cream. I don't know about the cream. I haven't heard of anyone getting cream from their doctor. I see a lot of ladies on the internet going to the pharmacy, like going to the drug store and getting it, but not with a prescription. So I'm not going to advocate for progesterone cream. I'm not saying it's bad. I just don't have enough information to say, yes, go and get that. But if you get a prescription version of it, oral, vaginal, some people take it anally. God bless you. Or, a uh, progesterone and oil, PIO, injection, that will help. So what happens if you're not pregnant? If you're not pregnant, well, let me go back. Because if you are pregnant, what happens to your corpus luteum and your progesterone? There's a dance that has to happen. So if you are pregnant, meaning this embryo has come down after day seven, so we'll say day eight, it's made it into your lining, to your uterine cavity, it's landed in the endometrial lining, once it connects in that lining, it's going to start emitting what? You know, because you know we pee on these sticks for it to see if we're pregnant. It's going to start emitting, right, HCG. So that HCG then sends a signal back to the corpus luteum. Hey, we got a hot one here. We really need this progesterone to help progest, help this be pro-pregnancy, this woman's body. So it HCG sends that signal back to the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum keeps cranking out that progesterone so that it stays elevated because that's going to help sustain the pregnancy. And it will continue doing that. It's essential for the first 12 to 13 weeks. After that, the placenta will take over doing the job that the progesterone has been doing. So a lot of times you'll hear women who have had multiple miscarriages, they'll be taking it, um, progesterone and oil or some sort of progesterone supplementation 12 to 13 weeks into their pregnancy. So if you're not pregnant, what happens? There's no HCG, right? That's why we get that BFN. We start over, we know, or we keep testing. But when for sure we're not pregnant, there's no HCG. So there's no communication going back to the corpus luteum saying, we got a hot one here. So corpus luteum is like, oh, looks like we didn't do it this month. We, we'll pack up our bags, gear up for next month. So it slowly starts cutting down the production of the progesterone. As that progesterone, progesterone decreases, it's no longer being sent to your uterine lining, right? Because there's less of it. So say it was at 7, say it was at 10, say it was at 12 on cycle day 21 or 7 days after ovulation, 7 DPO, 7, 7, 7, reminds me of friends. Um, on day 27... Now your progesterone's at a three. So it's less in there. So it's less being sticky to the it's creating less stickiness in the lining. Once it gets so low, your lining had doesn't have enough things to keep it sticky to keep it hanging on. So it just whoosh, starts to break down. And that's when you have your period. So how does that work for pregnancy? How does that work for starting a new cycle? As I said, with the pregnancy, once you get a positive, typically you'll go in for your beta, um, which will be your HCG, usually your E2, your estrogen, and your progesterone, your P4. If your P4, at that point by pregnancy, they want it to be at least 20 to 0. If it's not 20, a lot of doctors will supplement. If yours is not a believer... One, don't get them a Christmas present because they don't believe in Santa uh, or the Easter Bunny. Or those are both religious, though. I don't know. If your doctor is Jewish, they may not believe in either one of those. It's a bad reference. Anyway, I digress. 
Um, advocate for yourself to get the supplements for the progesterone is really what my point is. If it's iffy, if it's around, I don't know, 16, 17, they may not. They may just keep monitoring it and give it a chance to increase. Um, but if you have a history of miscarriages, definitely have them look at your progesterone. So that's how that works. They're giving you that supplement to keep your lining intact because if the progesterone drops, your lining is going to start to thin. You're going to have, you're going to experience bleeding and possibly a miscarriage. There are doctors who will say there is no clear correlation between increased progesterone and miscarriage. I can attest to that. I was taking progesterone when I had a low progesterone reading in my pregnancy in 2017 and I still had a miscarriage. So it's my OBGYN explained it as it's one of those things can't hurt, might help. Not a guarantee. There is, if your baby is not coming, it's not coming. Um, there's not any amount of progesterone that's going to change that for you. This is offering support for it, right? So that's how it helps with the pregnancy. So how does it bring about a period? So here's the tricky part, because it's, they call the treatment a Provera. I don't know why I air quoted it. That's the proper name is Provera. Um, and it's not really bringing a period. What it's doing is having a breakdown bleed or a breakthrough bleed or withdrawal bleeding because your period's not coming because you didn't ovulate. So it didn't actually build up a full lining and there was no egg that was released, right? So there was no egg that was released. There was no, because what happens when the egg is gone, right? The corpus luteum sends out the progesterone. So because the egg wasn't released, the corpus luteum is not sending down the progesterone. So it's not transitioning your lining. So eventually when there are normally when there is no progesterone that ever came, your lining will eventually break down on its own. Sometimes it won't. So how do you encourage that? You're going to do the same thing. You're going to take the progesterone supplements so that your progesterone goes up really, really high. Then your doctor will have you stop and it does what? It drops. And when it drops, there's nothing to keep supporting that lining. So your lining is going to come out. So that will be some women will start a cycle. A lot of REs, reproductive endocrinologists, fertility doctors, whatever you want to call them, won't continue to give people Provera because it shows you're not ovulating on your own and there's something else going on. Um, but if it's like one or two or you kind of get stuck, they'll do it. That's a whole other video about why you're not ov ovulating. But in a rare instance, if you don't, your doctor can give you the progesterone to get you started. Also, when you're taking birth control pills, you're not having a period, right? It's the same mechanism. Um, the progesterone is stopping you. The estrogen and progesterone is being manipulated to stop you from having a period. A lot of women will start their IVF cycles with birth control. So they they haven't had a period. They haven't built it up. It's meant to suppress your ovaries. Um, at my age, it's not advised to do birth control pills with the IVF estradiol or estrogen and cetratide during my little phase. So after, which is why we've been tracking ovulation with me, if you've been watching my channel. So, cause people are like, why are you tracking it? And you're doing IVF. It's so that we can do priming in the little phase before. So in order to start the priming, we have to know when I ovulate. So hopefully that makes sense for both the ladies who are having progesterone to help support a pregnancy and the ladies who are having progesterone to bring about a period. It's the same mechanism, but you're just triggering it at different points, right? Okay. If that doesn't make sense, let me know. If that does make sense. Give me a thumbs up. All right. I'll talk to you ladies later. Bye. Mm. <sighs> Baby dust to us all.